Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Valerie with Neighbor to Neighbor. I am the Director of Learning and Leadership Development. Um, and I want to welcome you to the Neighborhood Passions Affinity Network. Um, we're so happy to have you here tonight. The purpose of the network is to bring together neighbors, community partners, and other stakeholders just like you from across the metropolitan area around um, eight key neighborhood passions. And those passions are crime prevention and reduction, which is tonight, uh, beautification of the environment, neighborhood planning and development, making government work for our neighborhoods, neighborhood prevention, community and diversity, caring for our neighbors and effective neighborhood organizing. I bet some of you can repeat those for me by heart by now. <laughs> um, tonight, we're focusing on um, crime reduction and prevention. And the topic is crime prevention through environmental design. Um, and so we're really pleased to announce or to tell you again that um, our presenting sponsor of the Neighborhood Passions Affinity Network and our C4N Nashville 2021 coming up in May. So mark your calendars. Um, so we're excited to welcome them as our sponsors. Did I name? Comcast, yes, as our sponsor. Um, so without further ado, Jim, I'm going to turn it over to Jim. He's got a little comment to make. Oh, thanks, Valerie. Let me get back here. So uh, two things. One is since tonight's crime uh, reduction and prevention, we just wanted to give you a highlight information that no one else in the world has right now. Um, and that is concerning C4I Nashville, which is coming up on Saturday, May 15th. Um, we are very pleased to announce uh, uh, a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, that uh, during that day, um, we have three, three workshops or, or breakout sessions specifically on crime prevention and reduction. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, a conversation with the new police chief. Uh, chief Drake will be there uh, to talk to us about his strategies for preventing crime and reducing crime in neighborhoods. Um, and it will be more of a conversational format so people will get a chance to uh, share and join in a conversation with him. And then we're going to do a, a session uh, on, uh, whoops, sorry, that just slipped off there. Uh, we have a really good session, uh, a panel discussion on community policing. Uh, it's going to have a brief primer about what it is. And then we have some of the, the leading uh, opponents and proponents of community policing that are going to be part of that conversation. I'm um, really having a conversation about what community policing could or should or shouldn't look like uh, in metropolitan Nashville, Davidson County. And then finally, I'm going to be leading a, a facilitated dialogue. Um, with participants on car break-ins and, and how we can change the, di uh, the paradigm. Uh, the story right now is, is as many of you know, um, we welcome the community affairs officers into our neighborhood meetings and every month they say, what? Lock your door. Um, and yet we're still having this high, high, high rate of car break-ins. Uh, and so we're going to think together about new strategies that we can use in our neighborhoods uh, to help change that story. Um, so I invite you to be thinking and marking your calendar for Saturday, May 15th. Um, I also just want to note real quick that we are in the midst of our semi-annual membership campaign. Uh, the uh, cost of these classes are, it is not, it does, it costs us money to put these on um, and it, we uh, don't charge for it. Uh, and so how we do that is by asking people to become members. Uh, we have a wide membership range, anywhere from $25 to, eh, you can give us $10,000 if you'd like, um, <laughs> whatever, whatever you can best afford. Um, but that's how we keep the lights on. That's how we keep uh, this chat room open. Uh, and so I'm going to, in a moment, put in the room a link for our uh, Build a Better Tomorrow for Our Neighborhoods campaign. And I just want to encourage you to think about uh, a donation to that. Valerie, back okay. to you. Sure. So tonight, again, we're doing crime prevention through environmental design, and um, that is a multidisciplinary approach to crime prevention that uses urban and architectural design and the management of, built, of the built and natural environments. Uh, during the session, we'll look at how you and your neighbors uh, can use SEPTED, which is the acronym, uh, to help make all of us safer. 
And we're really happy to have Sergeant Byron DeLapp here from Metropolitan National Police Department to, to lead us in this discussion. Byron? Uh, yeah, good evening. Thank you all for uh, being here. Um, actually, I go by Sergeant Chris DeLapp, and I wanted to clarify a couple of things real quick on the uh, bio, which you probably recognized immediately that I didn't graduate in 2013 high school. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so uh, you probably recognize that. But um, I am here, and I'm, I'm glad that you guys are here, and we'll talk about those things. I always like to tell a police story um, before I get started. And one of the stories is, is that I, uh, I worked in a job at um, Applebee's for many years and was in full uniform. And so I'm sitting up front um, of uh, Applebee's as people come in, families come in, and, and different people. And so uh, this family comes in, and there's this little boy uh, that comes in. And as soon as he comes in, I'm off to the right. And he stops immediately, and he looks at me, and he says, you the police? I said, yeah. He said, now, what's my name? <laughs> and his father was behind him, and his father mouthed his name to me. And uh, he mouthed the name, and, and he said, uh, I said, well, you're Dante. And he got all worried and looked around and, and asked his dad, how did, how did he know my name? And, and he goes, he's the police. And he goes, no. Nah. He goes, how old am I? And his dad, once again, behind his back, <laughs> showed me that he was six years old. And so I said, well, you're six years old. And he freaked out a little bit and started uh, saying no. And he would ask more questions. And we had a good time. And the reality is, is that, you know, um, the reason I share that story is because we're not, we, we don't know everything. Uh, obviously, like he immediately, I said, I'm the police. Uh, I know these things. And he said, he was, no, that, that's not right. But um it's about seeing something and saying something. We're not, uh, we don't know everything. And uh, you know that as well as I do. And we need each other uh, in order to try to prevent crime in any way that we can. And, and the solutions, uh, you know, can come up. And so that's what we're gonna do here tonight. Uh, I am not an expert on SEPTED. I tell you, I went through a 40 hour class and uh, learned a lot of things through that. And I'm gonna share those things, best practices, recommendations and things like that uh, with you. I've got a PowerPoint as well, where we went out and did a survey on a house and then officer Erickson is also with me here tonight and he's going to share a little bit later. Uh, he uh, conducted a survey on some businesses on a business uh, area uh, downtown. And so, um, you know, just uh, if you have questions, I guess we'll, we'll wait till the end, Jim. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So uh, I'll go through uh, our PowerPoint. We'll bring that up here. Um, but it is a uh, SEPTED, you know, crime prevention for environmental design. And uh, I'll do my best to, to give you those things and try to help uh, make you think about things uh, area for both the, the you know, the uh, preventing crime and, and reducing crime uh, as well. Okay. So we'll go through several examples here, but this is, um, this is going to be uh, a neighborhood house and many of you probably are in that as well, uh, but it'll help you hopefully just by viewing this and understanding um, what we're trying to get your eyes to do. Uh, and the ultimate goal is that we want, to we want to be able to see, right? We want to draw our eyes to the, where they're open and, and can see things. And so if you look at this house here, uh, this is just a regular daylight picture of this house. Um, as we go to the next one, the uh, back of it is, is also in the daylight. So you can clearly see everything. There's not really any dark spots or shadows or anything like that. Uh, same thing with the front. Um, you can see some hedges. Uh, one thing to remember is when we're doing a survey, if you'll see that this, this bush over here on the right-hand side of this tree, uh, you can imagine that this was done in the fall because all the leaves are off. And so that's one thing you need to remember that what you see in the fall will be different than what you see in the summer, uh, whether it's the, um, you know, the thick shrubs or the canopies are low. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to point out, if you'll notice in the canopy, uh, of where this uh, river, river birch is and it's hanging down, uh, you want to make that at least six feet from the ground. It needs to be raised up six feet so that you can see the house from the street and in the house you can see the street. That puts more eyes on the street uh, in our and in our neighborhoods for us to see something. And if we do, we say something as well. So, um, but, um, so you saw the front and back, just normal lighting. Um, and then the back side is this, and then this is at night. There's not any lights on at the house. 
um, at this house at all. And uh, the reflection that you're getting is from a, a um, street light. And so when you have it like this in the dark, you can see all kinds of dark, uh, dark spots to where someone could hide and where someone could uh, you know, stay back behind the shrubs. Uh, as far as shrubs go, you normally want to keep those about two feet tall. And then once, this, as I said, you want to keep the uh, canopy about six feet. That way you can, a normal person can see uh, straight to the house. And like I said, you can see as well, or as the out of the house uh, as well. So uh, if we move on to, um, this is the sidewalk of that house. And if you look at that, there's, uh, you'll see that large evergreen tree on the left. Um, that is something that someone could hide behind. You can also see where the windows are here. The bushes are kind of raised uh, uh, up on that. And what you're trying to do, and, and the other thing here uh, with this bush here is that if, and I'll show you in a few minutes, but uh, in that area, a person, if those leaves were completely um, grown out on that tree, then it would provide what? It would provide uh, concealment. And what we're trying to avoid is, is having somebody a place to conceal something so that they can do something. And it's often a crime of opportunity. Uh, so there is, uh, now we've turned on the lights of this house and you can see a whole lot clearly uh, that entire area. You still have some issues with those, and we'll, we'll talk about that, uh, the, the trees and the uh, large evergreens and things like that. But if you'll notice down here to the left, uh, these bushes here, uh, there's a spot there, a uh, window, but someone probably could lay behind that. So you want to be aware of, of those kind of things. One of the things you could do is trim the inside of those. You still have the bush um, and, and the, the, you know, the landscape of it, but it would be cut back so that uh, they wouldn't be able to easily conceal themselves. Now, if you'll look at this, uh, where these bush bushes are, they're cut just below the windows, so that's good, but this allows, because of the, um, the high, uh, the, I guess the size of the shrubs there, allow for a dark space behind that. Um, and so down in there, someone could hide there, wait for the opportunity. This tree may have more um, leaves on it, which also adds to concealment. One of the ways that you can try to avoid these uh, dark spots or shadows or, or things like that. Um, and that's what it looks like at night. And what they did is they put up a light, a spotlight um, or an easement light to look down. And so now you can clearly see uh, that no one's down there, no one's uh, behind that. Um, and that's uh, allowing you to be sure that uh, no one's uh, you know, trying to hide or conceal themselves. Um, this has gone back to that, uh, the original sidewalk we talked about in the front of the house. Uh, as you're coming to uh, this evergreen bush, and uh, there's also an area of the driveway actually goes to the left here, and at the top of that driveway, there's more lights, and those lights will, will help uh, avoid someone being able to hide uh, behind that bush because that exposes them to the rest of the neighborhood, uh, with people driving by or, or neighbors or things like that. So if you look at this, this is one of the important things that you want to uh, kind of pay attention to. If you're walking, just imagine you're walking on the right side of the street. As you're walking on the right side of the street, you should notice that what does the bush on the right hand do? It can conceal someone and keep them from being seen. And the, the bad thing about this is that it's so close to the street when you're walking that you don't have much of a reaction time when someone comes out from behind that bush. Generally, what we would like to do if you're designing something or if you're working on something to, to try to prevent that at your yard, then you want to make sure that you have at least 30 feet. And the reason you have that 30 feet is so that what? That gives you time to react and, and to run or to you know, fight or flee or whatever the case may be. So it's important for you to, um, to look for those things. I see a lot of people that, that walk at night um, and uh, you need to be aware of the surrounding. The easy thing to do in this situation is to walk to the other side of the street and stay away from those consumer areas uh, throughout the neighborhood. And then this is um, up there at the top, you'll see a street light. Um, the flash kind of made this look a lot brighter than it is uh, in real life, uh, the flash from the, from the camera. But if you'll see the shrubs here in this landscaping, area there's also areas for people to conceal uh, themselves so you want to kind of prevent those if you're out walking at night um, and you want to you know to be as safe as possible and have as much of a reaction time if you are able to a lot of this is just best practices and, and some common sense 
um, and, and you know as well as, as well as recommendations. So if you look at the light, the house lot now, and uh, whereas you looked at it before, it was all dark and there was hidden uh, places. The interesting thing here is on the left hand side, um, you'll notice that this is LED light on the left hand side. On the right hand side is like a halogen bulb or an older uh, older model bulb, uh, and you can see the difference um, with the lighting. And so it's important to have those lights, uh, the LED lights. Um, the LEDs are the ones that are recommended the brightest in those kind of things, uh, those in those environments uh, to help uh, avoid the uh, dark spots and shadows and things like that. So, um, and there again is you see um, you see that area there where the tree is. It's blocking that window. Um, that should be trimmed. It could be trimmed up some uh, to six feet, and that may allow more opportunity to see somebody uh, that might uh, be in that concealment. Um, most of us, you know, when we take care of our property, we take care of our homes. That also allows and lets people know uh, in the neighborhood that we care. Uh, and we can do that as, as neighbors to help one another uh, to do that, um, especially, you know, if you have your own HOAs and things like that uh, to present that. But um, if you'll see on the right-hand side where that large tree is, there's also some lights in the back that, that um, come down on top of, of the driveway. And it kind of uh, keeps anybody from being able to hide theirs too. There's a fence, um, there's a fence back there and also a gate um, as well. But providing that light, uh, the LED light, is a lot better to, uh, to, for people to be able to see uh, the environment. And here you can kind of uh, clearly see um, the lands or the uh, river birch, and that's the canopy. That's actually well above six feet, so you can see both the, uh, the, in the entire house across the front. And then um, this on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side where you see the light coming through, that's the other side of the LED bulb, and that is one that um, obviously lights up that area. But you see the dark spot right in here? This is, a, this is a place where new lighting should be put and shined down on to prevent someone being able to get to that close on the first floor window um, that where somebody could enter the building or enter the, the, uh, the house. And so when we're looking at those things, when we see those shadows, uh, and it doesn't have to be expensive, um, you can use a, a solar light and, and attach it to the easement up here, and it, and it could shine down on that area. You don't necessarily have to rewire the whole house um, in order to do that, but that's some of the uh, ways to prevent um, hiding places for, for people that are trying to commit burglaries or, or assaults uh, and those kind of things. So um, there's the backyard of this house. Uh, as you see, there's a, there's a tree on the right-hand side, and this is... Um, there's a little bit of a, there's a dark area in the very back, the further it goes. The idea here is I would put more light on a fence, maybe a solar, um, a solar panel that's, uh, that's run by the, by the sun and brightened up, um, it could brighten up that area on the back of the uh, area in the fence, in the, in the fenced in area. When I talk about shadows and, and those kind of things, um, if you notice in this area right here next to that, that, that area is about a six foot area where a person could hide, and you'd never see them um, if that area is, remains the same way it is. That's an opportunity for them to hide uh, and, be in, and to get into the back uh, yard, uh, as well as to wait for uh, someone to come out um, and assault you or something, uh, you know, or commit a burglary. Also, this bush uh, in the uh, summertime or spring is going to be filled with those kind of things, and that's going to block if you'll see that, another shot at night, that, that whole area in the back is completely dark. Now, these easement lights are on here, and you can see clearly as to what um, it's illuminating. But you can also see those dark spots on the right-hand side and the dark spots on the left-hand side. And then it's completely uh, blocked right here. Your view is completely blocked and can't see what might be out there. Um, and so it's important to uh, cut that shrubbery accordingly. Um, as you're going through that. So um, I was going to ask if there's any questions, but I guess we're waiting for that, uh, Jim, at the end. No, I um, think you're welcome to ask to have people ask questions. I, I would encourage it. Yeah, okay. 
Does anybody have any questions on uh, some of that that I can answer? Hey, this is Twanum. Yes. Is it still accurate that 95 plus percent of residential burglaries occur during the daytime? Yeah, that's, yeah, I don't think that's changed at all. Um, okay. With one of the, yeah, for sure. Okay, so not having windows covered is important to reduce one of the most common crimes that everyone suffers. Is it still accurate that um, people hiding outside of windows and in bushes and doing assaults primarily occurs where someone is targeted for some reason and not just a haphazard event? I, I don't I'm not sure um, as far as like like a statistically statistically speaking. Well, we're working also with Metro Council on the Dark Skies Initiative, which puts light where it's needed and also um, using low light where possible in order to not destroy our environment. Um, and much of what we see out here is that where light is used appropriately, it forces people who are walking around checking door handles to actually have to use a flashlight. So they actually become more visible. Um, when everything is lit up, they don't need a light. So I just want to confirm that random attacks that may occur because there's one dark place in a yard are still pretty rare occurrences and that they, when someone is targeted like that, in my experience, it's most often because they know that person, for instance, is carrying a large amount of money or dope or, you know, whatever. It's not it's not the kind of thing you just hear neighbor after neighbor experiencing. I just want to make sure something hasn't changed with regard to that. No, I don't think so. Okay. And then uh, we're working with developers to build in safety. So we're asking them to incorporate um, lighting in appropriate places, pre-wire uh, places for security cameras, uh, do motion activated lights, um, stronger hardware in the doors, triple windows on the lower level, um, and those kinds of things. When you think about things that could be put in as a home is designed, are there any new great practices that we may not be thinking about for the very common crimes of daytime residential burglaries and theft from motor vehicles at night? Well, I think whether it's a, it's a targeted crime or it's a, a crime that somebody comes out, I mean, the best, if you can avoid having that shadow, regardless, uh, it's going to be a benefit um, to that person, uh, you know, if, as far as like being prepared or maybe no, um, having the time to react. So following these steps are best practices that, that I'm aware of and um, that we learned in the class is, um, is something that is beneficial to, uh, to a neighborhood as well as um, the neighbor to neighbor, and as well as to the person that may have been, I guess, a targeted, um, you know, person as far as that goes. Any other questions? Uh, I have one. Yes, go right ahead. Um, you mentioned putting uh, uh, solar lights, particular, particularly in the back, I believe the one that I really noticed. Um, are these lights deep, obviously powered by the sun during the day? Do they come on at a particular hour during the night and stay on? Or can you set a timer or anything of that nature? Well, that would be to, that would depend on what kind of light you bought. Like if you went to Lowe's and bought some of them are solar and they kick on automatically. Some of them can be, uh, they have motion sensors on the bottom, bottom of them um as well and so all of that would be within the uh, you know the makings of that light and what kind of light it was that kind of thing so but yeah i mean i think it'd be a, a good idea uh solar wise it's a you know money saving thing as far as that goes um you know but it may be better you just have to kind of look at the overall performance of that light okay okay thank you
any other questions? Anyone, has anyone um, given any thought to um, this the environmental design uh, to uh, create a more safe um, home, your home, you know, keep your home, your neighbors more safe? Oh, okay. Well, we in, we in Cane Ridge, like I, I just said, we, we just had a bill passed on Tuesday on third reading um, and we actually got the developer to put in the bill language about using better screws in the door frames so that a door can't just be shouldered open and the screws actually go into the studs and not just the framing itself. Uh, and we've talked to them about the motion activated lights so that there's, uh, you know, they'll, they'll know if something's going on. Um, so there's a lot of thought going into what we're calling safety by design, safe neighborhoods by design, um, because if the builder does an entire neighborhood on the front end, you can really, um, you can really change the, the whole neighborhood. Uh, of course, you still have to get people to not leave stuff in their car. We, part of our design strategy is uh, enough storage space that people can still put their cars in their garages rather than leaving them outside unlocked. Um, so we're actually making this a big part of what we're working on in Cane Ridge and we're trying to think outside the box to the small things that you can do on the front end to protect people for decades down the road. Right. Yeah, that sounds very good. Um, um, Carolyn, yep. you're yeah. on a mute. Hi. Hi, I've got a question. On the news this afternoon, I heard that the uh, police department is very short on uh, policemen. So has it come to uh, a decision how to recruit more police? Because in my neighbor in um, neighborhood in Antioch, they told us that they just don't have the police to service us. So is it any kind of plan that's going to try to recruit, you know, new police or what? Because we have the security cameras in, a, in my neighborhood and they told us we just cannot get there because we have limited policemen. Well, we, we um... As far as the, the limited uh, police and, and being short, uh, that is that is true. Uh, but I would defer that to Chief Drake. I think he's going to be on. Uh, he has a, a plan uh, that he has come up with for all kinds of different areas, and I think that he would be the best person. Uh, I do know that they're working on uh, recruitment and different angles um, that they can look at to draw people in and looking at other departments as well as colleges and different things like that. So. Uh, yes, they are working uh, to get more officers here and to recruit the best that we can get. And uh, sometimes that just takes time, but I do know that he's working on and has a plan for that as well. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Well, I, I know that um, Sergeant DeLapp had uh, a meeting come up here this evening that he's going to need to get to go to. But I wanted to take a moment, first of all, to thank him for being here. Uh, and and uh, I want to take this to another level, if we can, and that is we have some people in this room who have really uh, have been working with this for even before Sergeant DeLapp uh, graduated. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, I know that Doug Perkins is, uh, I believe Doug's still in the room. Um, I know he's not, Jim, but he left a message. He left a message. Okay. And I know John Stern is here and John has been working with this for a long time. And I wondered if either one of those would like to comment on uh, uh, okay, John's putting up, hanging up his phone and he's ready to go. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I really appreciate the officer for being here. And uh, this is kind of like septed, uh, uh, septed phase two. I love it. Uh, and I, you know, my, my perspective on these things is that you have to look at it and, in, you know, and, and insert options that are appropriate for the environment. Uh, I think uh, uh, Ms. Chick 
properly identified that there is a relatively low risk associated with some of these uh, some of these solutions. And I think from my experience in some areas, you know, light is a whole lot more important than in others. Uh, there are certain risks associated. And uh, I, you know, I look forward to working with you in the future as we move forward with kind of the efforts that we're doing with, in fact, uh, the development of crime prevention through the design of actual neighborhoods. Uh, you know, how do we set and, and with Sue and Kathleen and, you know, <clears throat> we're actually working on creating neighborhoods that are safer, that are healthier, that are more engaging uh, than what is uh, some that have been created in the past. So I appreciate the option, uh, op you know, the opportunity to listen to you. And Jim, thank you very much. And Valerie, thank you for uh, the opportunity to be with you guys tonight. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you and thank you for having me. I will say that uh, Tawana is on the right path as far as doing it before it's built. Um, it's a lot easier to make those adjustments uh, during the building phase. And, and so just to ensure that, you know, the light's in the right place. And, I'm, and like you said, Tawana, I think uh, without a doubt, going ahead and creating all of that for all of the houses there uh, in that neighborhood is a much better um, you know, a much better plan than coming in afterwards and trying to wire in, you know, easement lights or, or any other lights for that matter. So um, that's definitely, uh, you know, what I would do and, or I'd move in a neighborhood like that because uh, I know that, that light does deter crime. We all do, um, you know, and so it's, the, it's one of the best uh, crime reductions uh, for, for it to be lit up, you know, for everything in the area to be lit up. So they'll go somewhere else where it's dark to commit their crimes. So. So thank you all for having me. And thank we'll go ahead and check out Jim. I want to thank take you. We got you. Uh, thank you. Hey, we're not we're not going to go away, but uh, you got to go to a meeting. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Sergeant. Right. Thank you all. All right. Hey, thank you. Up, up the street from me uh, is uh, Brian Kelly. He's over in Shelby Hills neighborhood. And they got a program called Lights, Cameras, and Action. And I, I wondered, Brian, if you'd be willing to say a few words about what, what that's all about. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's gotten yeah. shy on us. All right. Yeah. Jim, uh, you need a Sergeant, De uh, not Sergeant Delight, but um, Doug's comments out of the chat box. It's I, I didn't get it. Oh, you didn't get it. Okay. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Um, he did, uh, Doug Perkins, uh, who's a professor at Vanderbilt University, um, he said early in his career, he was doing a lot of work with SEPTED. Uh, and he just wanted to do a summary of his research, which is a, just about a paragraph. But um, he said that Sergeant DeLatte provided a wealth of great tips that are about uh, all about a kind of architectural and landscape design based crime prevention called defensible space uh, that has to do with how to uh, target hardened homes and businesses or improve visibility. But there are two other more subtle kinds of septet, one good and one bad. Uh, the good one is called uh, environmental territory wow he's a professor territoriality right um basically the walkability of the streets like sidewalks and stuff like that right uh exterior maintenance beautification personalizing your yard and home uh and and i have one example that i read early on which was fascinating to me um and it had to do with a, a park in in washington dc where that that park in that neighborhood had all this crime uh and the residents did a simple thing. They put plants and cleaned up their front porches and they made sure that their lights were on. And they said the crime the reduction, and I can't remember the amount, but it was significant. It was absolutely significant. And so even taking those steps that people know that it says very clearly, we care about where we live, right? Uh, that, that's, really, that's really, really important to reducing crime. Um, and, and then he went on to say the bad one's called uh, physical disorder 
or incivilities, so-called broken windows theory, um, which basically says if, if poor maintenance, litter, graffiti, all of that emboldens criminals and makes them uh, residents fearful and look uh, out for each other. And the, the broken window theory used to be you have one broken window, people are going to get depressed and there's going to be more broken windows and then crime's going to come in. That hasn't really lived out in research. Um, so just I'm sure all of us have heard of bro the broken window theory, but it, it hasn't been lived out. Um, but uh, so those are the two things that he had. All right. Yeah. Um, can I add one more thing? Please. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, I specifically wanted to respond to Carolyn. I've, Carolyn, I'm retired from the police department, so I've got more freedom of speech than a currently employed uh, sergeant does. And I did the same thing as Sergeant DeLapp. And right now, one of the bottom lines that we're at is that we do not have a number of officers that has kept up with the population increase. Unfortunately, what that is going to take is more funding to increase that number. So that's a really difficult place to be in because they are running uh, call to call, trying to catch up on calls. I had a burglary here at my home in December and it took five hours for them to respond. Um, and that's it's a sheer volume issue. So the more that citizens can do to help on the front end uh, is definitely better because our tax dollars and our tax rate can't really do enough right now. Um, if you have abandoned vehicles, I'll have to I'll have to uh, disagree a little bit with Jim. If you have abandoned vehicles uh, sitting on the road, you know, try to get them out of there. You can call Hub Nashville and get them out. If you have properties that are sitting vacant and run down, they do need to be cleaned up and taken care of because uh, some of the crimes that are the most prevalent are crimes of opportunity, especially with regard to our youth uh, gathering up and walking around and doing thefts from motor vehicles, especially at night. So uh, you have to create uninviting spaces for them. And you're welcome to reach out to me if there's any information I can provide you in your specific area, because I live in Antioch with you. Hey, uh, uh, Tawana, as you're doing your work, I, I, I think it is fascinating that most of the crime does happen during the daytime. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and when we're not around and, and packages getting stolen and things yeah, like that. that. And it, it's, not, it's not all in the daytime. Your residential burglaries are daytime because yeah. they don't yeah. want to encounter people. Right. Your uh, package thefts are generally daytime and evening, but your theft from motor vehicles are often late, late, late at night or early, early in the morning, you know, yeah. 2 a.m. Yep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Question. Um, a question. Do you think that bars on the windows cause people more attractive to break in your home, yes or no? To whom is that question directed? <laughs> One, it doesn't matter. Just do my, you think, yeah, for security experience. purpose, all, you know, most areas, low income areas where my parents live have bars on their windows. So I wanted to know if that's attract more criminals or less. And of course, when you have alarm, that helps. But does bars help or no? Bars can help physically, but it does send a uh, nonverbal message that's not necessarily great. But I'll tell you, triple pane windows, they don't go in triple pane nice windows. It's um, windows that are like mine, they're the old double panes and easy to get into. They've got the old clamshell locks that break really easily. They've got shrubbery around where they can pop that window without anybody seeing it. They've got a privacy fence that you can slip into the backyard and take as much time as you need. Um, so they, if you drive around your own neighborhood, you can pick out which ones you would hit if you were wanting to do a burglary. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. When we first moved into our neighborhood, we were getting a one of our windows broken into probably about once every couple of months. Now, the alarm went off and they never took anything. But we finally invested in, in the triple pane window 
And, you know, what they would do is they would throw a brick in or, or something like that. And of course, with those, with the, and I don't know if it was triple pane, but the kind we got, the brick just bounced off the window. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I can't, I would love to have had a camera to see their surprise the first time they threw that brick at the window and it didn't break. Mm -hmm. uh, and that certainly made me feel good. I, I, for me, I wouldn't have liked the bars on the windows. It wouldn't have made me feel good. But there are better options out there to also protect. Well, mm -hmm. and the bars are really dangerous if you happen to have a fire. I've yeah. witnessed people, you know, die inside their home because they couldn't get out, and that's a really bad thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Regarding, um, can, can I ask you a question regarding cars? Because um, we don't have a garage that we can pull our car into. Um, is it possible, is it better to leave your car unlocked? I mean, we don't leave anything in there anyway, but I don't want someone busting out my windows. Or is it better to leave it locked? If you'll research on YouTube, you'll see lots of videos taken where suspects are walking around and checking the doors. And if the door is unlocked, they will then rummage and take whatever, it may be only 50 cents, but because it was open, they'll go ahead and go in it. If the car door is locked, the interesting thing about a dark area is that then you see the interior light come on momentarily. And if people are paying attention and they see their next door neighbor's car light come on and then theirs comes on and then the next neighbor's comes on, you know somebody's walking along checking door handles. Our idea of what is valuable has to change. If it is a cell phone charger and they get 10 of those, that's valuable. And nobody reports them because there was nothing, you know, actually. Um, uh -oh. Sorry, go ahead. You're freezing up, Tawana. Can you repeat your last remark? Our idea of what is valuable needs to change. If they get a car charger from your car and from Jim's car and from my car, and they didn't have to do anything but open the door to get them, then that is something for them. Um, so it's important to lock, but it also means that you also need to have everything out of the vehicle that's valuable. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being with us tonight. I want to say thank you to Sergeant Dillap. Um, for his contribution this evening. Um, we'll be back next week uh, to focus on promoting biodiversity in your neighborhood. Uh, and so please join us. We're here every Thursday night, 6.15. Uh, let us know if you have something of interest you think you'd like for us to talk about. We're happy to bring that uh, to the group. You can email Jim or I and uh, we'll, we'll get somebody scheduled to talk about whatever it is. <laughs> uh, do I see somebody trying to speak to me? No. Okay. All right, Jim, thank you. You all take care. Have a great week. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.